Hello people, and welcome back to part 3 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much indeed uh, for all the support across the series. I'm really glad to see that you guys are still enjoying it and uh, enjoying our little vanilla build here. I am as well. It's nice to get back to basics every now and again, isn't it? However, in today's episode, I want to carry on satisfying some demands, uh, talking about a couple of ways in which we can do this and continuing to make the city look good at the same time. We will also be introducing the After Dark DLC, uh, which was the first expansion released for City Skylines way back in 2015, I think. Long time ago now. Uh, but it adds tourism and nightlife, and I want to start talking about terraforming today and how we can start working with some uh, waterfront builds using the nightlife DLC. And whilst the city is still fairly young, I want to talk about how important it is uh, to develop a cycling infrastructure uh, using the After Dark DLC and how effective that can be at reducing traffic. But we've got some nice ideas in store today. Let's get started, shall we? So again, we're back in city skylines now, and we can see that our residential demand is starting to come up. And we unlocked this tile last episode as well, so why don't we start now bringing down all these roads to be parallel with each other. And we can talk about kind of a fronted system, very much like we did for the industrial area here. Just a little slip road that is going to alleviate the pressure off of the main junction up here. However, I can possibly see opportunities now to introduce another main arterial road, very much in the vein that we have done here. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come into my medium road. I'm going to grab my upgrade tool as well. And then we're going to upgrade this. We will lose a bit of zoning. Don't worry about that. It's only a couple of houses. Yeah, they will regrow. We'll bring that one down there too. And then also hook this uh, back into the main road where we will lose a touch of our detailing. And just remembering the same kind of principles and concepts here is that this is a main road back to the highway. I might not want as much zoning on this road because I want it to be free. I don't want people stopping and starting here. So with that in mind, I'm just going to clear up the zonings that sit against this new four lane and trim up anyone that's built on there. And again, there's opportunities for detail in here as well. So again, we can use our draw and remeasure trick here to remain symmetrical if we want, so we can draw back to the highway and find out that it's a distance of 300. So we can try this again here. I just want to make sure that I'm at a distance of 300 between the highway. So I'll do 300 there. Then 330 back into the highway. Get the same thing on this side as well. And there we go. Just start your directions. And then people can come in. So of course, since we've uh, recorded an episode of the Noobs Guide, we now have new content creator trees uh, that came as part of the airports update. Uh, which now give us a much more uh, realistic and appealing tree palette. So we now have some of these California palms, a uh, coconut tree. If you're looking to see kind of an expose of everything that was introduced, uh, we do have that on the channel uh, during our airports feature. But why don't we bring in a little palm line? Or what, which, whichever ones are these, coconut trees even? Why don't we bring in a little coconut tree line instead? They kind of have a little palm vibe anyway. And then maybe some of these smaller grasses that we have now. Maybe some of these around the base, right, and add a little more personality into our slipway here. Doesn't have to be too much. Okay, so now we have much more varied and exciting green belt patterns that we can decorate our road networks and parks with, with these updates. And everyone would have got this as well, so this is all free content, right? And we will eventually get around uh, to covering the airports DLC on the Noobs Guide once the city is ready for an airport, of course. So now I'm just going to carry on bringing in my space in here. Again, remembering those kind of tips and techniques that we've learned from zoning up previous residential areas. Uh, I'm trying to make the most of my zonable space here. I'm also going to come off my road guideline. And why don't I bring in a couple of little order sacks down here as well, if you like, okay? And again, I can now just see opportunities where that zonable green belt is going to come through, okay? And you know, don't be afraid to delete housing here. Now you can see I'm just going to unzone a residential area when I can see that there's opportunities for pathways to come through. You know, it's fine. Don't be afraid to delete existing infrastructure to accommodate ideas that you know work and ideas that you're enjoying as well. Okay, so that's going to keep the walkability of the city nice and high. Likewise through here. And probably also see an opportunity to bring them along here now as well and feed them down there. Which gives more opportunities for some of our tree details to come through here as well today. So, all ideas that we've come across before. 
So we can fill these in. Of course, don't forget that the water facilities will also need to expand with this as well. So do that too. You can see some people already using the new slip road now. To get in and out of the city. So I guess the point of these little slip roads is just to hammer home the point of alleviating pressure off of other intersections around the city. Okay, you know, if people can come in this side and get around a little faster, then that's going to help everyone. Okay, very nice. This is all growing up now, starting to satisfy that uh, residential demand. Let's come over and have a look at the coastline over here, because I want to have a little talk about what we're going to do with this today. So in the last milestone, we did unlock the ability to grab a new tile, which I think I'm going to grab this one here. So we'll grab that tile, and this is going to give us access to a bunch of new stuff. We don't have one more tile, right, do we? No, yeah, we need another milestone before that. But so we can now build all through this space. This can be residentials. We can start moving a little high density over here. And uh, also start bringing the highway uh, through here as well, of course, because we want to extend this down towards the coast eventually. But uh, this opens up opportunities to do some builds along this waterfront now, which is what we're going to be doing today. So I want to move my water drain pipes first of all, and um, because these are sewage and these are very much going to break the vibe that I'm after. So I'm just going to relocate both of them all the way over here. Now, not forgetting, of course, that they will need to be reconnected and repowered because they have been moved. So just factor that in. We can draw in a very temporary power line just so it gets service powered be okay for us so now we've dumped this here this will eventually dissipate just over time it'll fade away as the fresh water continues to push it downstream but as a trade-off it's now going to start accumulating here we will eventually get rid of these for sunset harbors version of water treatment which is inland and non-pollutive so we'll just tolerate these for right now until we get to introduce in sunset harbor but what it's going to do is open up this coastline for me so we've also got a couple of water pumping stations, which again, see I can't relocate these yet because I'll be relocating them into poisonous water. So I think what we're going to do, oh yeah, actually make sure you hook it into the city's water network. <laughs> that will be helpful. And there we go. Everyone should go away. Wonderful. Everyone's toilets have started working again. Yeah, so I think at this point I'm actually going to go ahead and take the decision to delete these water pumps and move over to water towers instead. Which is going to be fine, okay? So let's have a couple of water towers over by our intersection. Okay, just link these into the pipe network. Okay, and then we can come over and delete one pump. Again, just double checking your availability to make sure that you don't siphon off all the need, which we probably will here. You'll see how it happens. There we go, way into the red. One more water tower here. You know, don't worry, we'll eventually tidy these up. It's very much just meeting the demands of the city. So we can work on this water from here. So we'll turn off this power line now. We don't need this anymore. And then we can start having a chat about terraforming for the first time. So especially within the vanilla maps, there is extremely severe terraforming levels. And it's something that doesn't really get better. And um, you will come across these very gnarly terraformed riverbanks. It's just a way a lot of the vanilla maps look. So now I want to have a look at introducing uh, terraforming and working with layers of height and depth to create a district along the waterfront that doesn't look horrific using the terraformed land that comes with the map. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> okay. If you're after a full breakdown of what each of these four tools does, there is a video on the channel. It will show you how each of them behaves, but I'll briefly talk about them here as well. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to chisel out kind of a tiered waterfront here, okay? So I want to go ahead and find my first layer, and I'm going to do that by grabbing level terrain. And we also have three sizes of brush as well, very similar to painting out a district. So I'm going to stick to a medium brush with the highest strength. Now I'm going to right click the height that I want to level out to. So you can use the contour lines to decide this. And then when you left click, the ground will move to that height that you right clicked. Vice versa, if I come up a little higher here and start to terraform there, then it's going to bring out that height instead. And then this one again as well. So the terrain tools are actually really simple, quite easy to use. They just take some getting used to. So now I have this layer, I want to make kind of pretty much all of this riverbank this same layer because this is going to be my first tier. So I'm going to chisel this out. 
If you do run out of soil, the airport's patch has introduced the options to buy and sell soil now for extraordinary amounts of money, which this city cannot currently afford because we are playing on one speed all the time and we don't have that much money. So try and avoid it where you can, but terraforming, as a general rule, is pretty expensive. So you might just want to leave your city on three speed for a bit. Okay. But well, here we go. So you now see how this is going to start to take shape. We're much closer to the water, which is going to give us exactly the sort of feeling that we want. You notice you should come out into the water. That terraforming gets more expensive. So it's about playing with different lines and angles now. And what I'll do it today as well is we'll jump into Palavan and I'll show you the effect that terraforming these different layers out can have once a city is kind of finished and, you know, like polished up. Because Palavan has some really nice layers of height, so I'll definitely jump into that city and show you that today. Okay, so you can see what a difference this is making now, right? I can start to plan out some riverfront builds. This is a river, right? River going into ocean, yes. So that's going to be fine. I'm going to be happy with that. All right, I can now start to plan out uh, some initial waterfront roads, if you like. Okay, I can maybe bring one through here and get this running this way and bring it down here. But now I want to start working on the concept of tiers and how this helps complement a build. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing now, but for my next layer. So I'm going to come into these contour lines. I'm going to move my little double headed uh, blue arrow onto a contour line I like the look of. I'm going to right click it and then I'm going to terraform it. And I'm going to repeat this exact process now. For this side instead. But you know this time just scooping out the next layer behind. If you do run out of money don't forget you do have loans available. Uh, you can take these just to finance your work for a little bit. You don't, you don't really notice the repayments on the loans, to be fair. So don't worry about taking them. Okay, I'm going to bring this back just a tiny little bit more. And then I think I'm going to be mostly happy with this setup for right now. We also have this arterial road down here as well. So I'm going to start bringing this over here now. Now I might want to snap to a road guideline here so I know that I'm level with the road along the bottom. So I know that this one here is going to be mostly level, okay? So just by snapping to the road guideline, we can now start to get an impression of setting up parallel roads. This is going to be really helpful from an aesthetic point of view. I'm going to bring this one down again, come on to my curve tool. I'll just get a nice curve into that road there. Now again, there's opportunities now where this can continue to come out and meet up with this road, which is now going to start really kind of interconnecting the whole city, right? So let's do that as well. Let's bring this one down here. Okay, although this is six lane, isn't it here? Yes, it is. So let's come out with six lane instead. We'll come down to this point. And then I think what we're going to do now is draw in another roundabout, very similar to what we did with our starting roundabouts here. Okay, exactly the same process. So we'll go through this together. We're going to come out with that curve tool with a one way road. And we're going to come out by five. And then up by five every time again always represented by that second blue line and then i can go ahead and grab my arterial road now we'll feed this one into here it's not going to line up but that's okay take off a little touch of that and then feed it in so we can now start to bring some curves into our main roads if we want not everything has to be so totally rigidly straight. And uh, I can see there's a massive uh, forestry spot here. Okay, you know, checking out natural resources tab. Got a ton of forest. So this would be a good idea or a good spot for a forestry build at some point. Likewise over here as well, once we introduce the interest DLC. But a little while away from that yet. Don't quite have to worry about it just now. But this is going to give uh, interconnectivity, okay? And there's now space here as well within this new road frame for suburbs to be expanded and different ideas to be played with. We can perhaps generate a green cities district in here once we come to play with green cities. I am, however, noticing that we have a first warning of the city. So back in episode one, I mentioned that the landfill site, um, it will become full, okay? This thing will fill up. 
and it will need to be entered into either other landfill sites, a recycling centre, or an incinerator, which doesn't unlock until another 7,500 yet. And we can see that as the landfill site is full, people around the city are now having garbage pile up, which is represented by the little garbage icon above that house. So the only thing we can do at the minute because we don't have an incinerator is I have to place another landfill site. Thankfully, we've already prepared for industrial expansion last episode with these grids, so just a case of popping one in. As the game plays, this will now function, and it will go out. There's no real point emptying this one yet. I guess you can come in and place in two if you want, and empty it back in. But you're just transferring the problem from one landfill site to another. You really want the incineration plants or green cities recycling centres to empty these things out. But we can't for right now, so just ignore it, okay? The new landfill site is going to deal with these problems. We don't have to worry about them. So now let's come into uh, actually getting up a nightlife district set up, okay? Using the After Dark DLC. So this icon down here, districts and areas, it does a lot of interesting and really quite cool things. So again, we have a brush size here, small, medium and large, pretty self-explanatory. We have paint district, okay? You can uh, also, similar with your zoning, you can right click with the paint tool to get rid of a district if you don't want it anymore. There's also an erase district option. Um, park areas come with Park Life DLC, industries with industries DLC, campus with the campus DLC, and airports with the airports DLC. Not covering those today, we're only going to have a look at basic districts and then also some commercial specializations as well. So these district tools will snap onto a road as you paint them, if you want them to be nice and straight. However, you can also come off the road and do them freeform. Okay, it's entirely up to you. Some people are very kind of OCD about how strict or how closely their districts actually follow the district road network. Others aren't too bothered. It's really personal preference. Okay, so this gives me a district. You can see it hovers over. When we come out of the district view, you can't see it. The only thing you can see is the name. There are also policies you can apply here as well. This list will grow depending what DLCs you do and don't have. And we also have taxation and city planning options available to us at certain milestones, but not quite yet. But what I'm interested in is applying a commercial specialization, which is a tab along the top here. So you see we have a tourism, which is unlocked at 5,000, which is what we're working with today. Alongside nightlife or leisure, which is what we're working with today as well. We also have a Ghana local produce, which is from Green Cities, and no specialization. So again, I can see now I've got some more demands coming in, so I want to start satisfying those. Let's have a little look at what we can do here. So again, we can just check our measurements to the highway at a distance of 160 either side, all right? So you can do 160 there, and then you know you're going to be parallel either side. We can start bringing these down now as well, and you know, playing with some new patterns, why don't we also get rid of these awful vanilla palms that we've got running down the highway, at least for this section for right now. And introduce one of our new content creator trees, maybe. Let's go for... I think the California fan palm will probably be most appropriate here, right? See how much of a difference this makes to our central reservation detailing. A lot nicer, isn't it? A lot more realistic looking trees now. Very nice indeed. Okay, but that's besides the point. Let's carry on bringing out our road network here. Let's bring a connection straight down into the main road at this point. I'm also going to line up the road to run parallel with the highway for a tiny bit. Bring this down. We'll come onto my curve tool again and uh, mimic the curve using the curve tool. Okay, so the road networks are now starting to kind of flow and complement each other. Makes a big difference, all right? Then why don't we bring a connection down onto the road this way if we can stay at a 90 degree snap. Yes, there we go. That's going to be great. So again, now it's all just about expanding road networks out. You find yourself stuck for inspiration for road networks and you know you're constantly just going very heavily gridded, quite rigid and you're getting bored of it. Then Google Earth is massive for neighborhood layouts. Different ideas, okay. And I think I'm happy to continue to introduce this little frontage system that we're developing in various different spots across the city now. I'm just going to zone up my new suburb. Again, remembering, trying not to do too much at once due to those death waves and saving those spaces where pathways can come through. Okay, 
No road guideline can be helpful as always in tighter spaces. Bring them through. Keep everyone walking, all right? You're really going to notice, especially if you've kind of played a city and then are maybe watching this series, if you haven't quite figured out how to play, um, going very walkable with your kind of pathway detailing is going to make an enormous difference to your traffic. You'll really notice a difference if you haven't really done it before. Okay, again, there's opportunities for people to be walking back into over here. Eventually, these will be highway roads, so we don't really want them walking on these, but it's fine for right now. Yes, our uh, electricity will jump through, of course. Let's maybe bring in some uh, commercial zonings to sit adjacent to the highway. So with the After That DLC uh, mentioned today at some points as well, uh, that we also had the concept of cycling introduced into the game, uh, which is massively powerful. It really is, okay? So what this is going to look like is the form of a pathway. Uh, we have the option for a bicycle path, which functions and works exactly the same as a walking path here, um, except people uh, will cycle on it. So Sims will cycle a lot further than they'll walk, and they'll also cycle pretty much the same distance that they would drive. Uh, we found evidence that they have essentially cycled the entire map. Um, so cycling infrastructure, very powerful and will reduce traffic on your cities a lot because people will be cycling instead. So let's have a little talk about how we can make cycling look a little bit nicer. Because at the minute, as you draw on the regular cycle path, it's a little bit bobbly around the edge of the network. Just not been kind of brought in that well, okay? The vanilla uh, pavement path has the same problem. Okay, it's just that texture. It's not too bad with a gravel path, but, you know, it's not nearly as bad. But there's one thing we can do uh, to fix this, and now this is a very slight, single step, lowest elevation. Okay? And I can now run this parallel with my highway, and between the frontage roads. Now, I'm not looking to bring this over, at least not yet, okay? I'm only elevating it. Because we'll, we'll see the difference, right? You know, if I'm to bring this down on the ground. How much better and more refined and purposely built does the elevated version look? So I hope you all agree that if we're going to run bike paths, let's run them on a very small single elevation point. They look a lot better. And it's now just a case of matching them up again with kind of the straight tiles, all right? Want to come through here. Again, I can come with my... My curve tool, get a little connection in there. And now this network is just going to, you know, follow my highway. People can cycle on this eventually and come and go from various different points. I can see opportunities perhaps where I might want to start looking at a possible crossing. Exactly the same as we've done with every other network. We want to be at least three small elevation points up. I can cross over my highway. I'm going to come down here. Again, I'm not afraid to delete infrastructure. And then let's bring this down on a nice smooth slope. And then people can now cycle over here as well. Repeating the distance from back down, I can see it's 224. I can repeat that exactly the same on this side as well. And then my bicycle network can carry on flowing. This doesn't need to be here anymore. Alright, so now you can just kind of see how you integrate it into the rest of the city and... You know, just make it a part of your build. And there's various different places we can do this all over the city. We can bring it out this way as well and feed it through perhaps some green cities high density residential over here. I'm very much on board for doing that. So lots of different ideas that we can do cycling. But the main thing is to have it following uh, your road network very much like you will do with your uh, public transport network. But it's going to be massively helpful. Also going to bring this one down as well. We will lose our power connection, but of course these are all uh, just temporary lines until we can find a permanent solution to link the power through. All right. So now we've got the first cycling infrastructure introduced into the city. Don't forget about this. As you're building out your highways, as you're building out your roads, build your cycling infrastructure alongside it. You will notice an enormous difference in just the walkability of the city. Okay. Massive difference. Let's go ahead and get some parks down here as well. Uh, for these people, let's go ahead and get a dog park in on the corner. We'll throw in maybe a carousel park. Near the main road, perhaps, over here. 
that's going to be good. And again, let's not forget those points of walkability to come through. Even run this straight the way through there and have connections down here. That can be continually complemented now with brand new and interesting green belt designs. I've been waiting to do this for a while. Okay, you know, all these new new leafy greens that are very exciting to use. We can perhaps discuss some, you know, grass lined pathways and lots of exciting new green belt designs now. What a wonderful little quality of life the free trees have been everyone, eh? Going over there too. So just a couple of little props like that, you know, what a difference it makes to a street corner, right? Enormous. And then as we perhaps bring in some more commercial here, I'm going to be happy with this. Very keen to hopefully see someone using the cycling. Yes, there we go. So you see, they're now cycling all the way over here. There's already quite a few of them too, right? Yeah, I see people heading back into to the industrial area. And you'll really start to visualize just how much traffic you're actually saving when you see how many people start cycling, because every one of them is a potential saved car journey, right? Yes, they could have walked if they're close enough, but they also could have driven. Which is bad news bears for traffic numbers, right? So there we go. Now starting to see much more personality and design appear around this central highway. Things are starting to get interesting, aren't they? Really are. Again, just monitoring our demands, we can see a little more industry coming in. So this is why we've got all this space prepared here, right? Now just come in. This is the kind of the real bonus of doing that advanced prep, you know. We've got these spaces ready to go and demands can be filled kind of pretty much as they come into the city, all right? Very nice. I can also see opportunities now for this road network to now extend up and into this one over here. We'll treat this as like another kind of main line arterial connection let's bring it also through here as well and we'll come out from a point here let's make sure our road guideline is on let's go for a 10 point there and then hopefully just a very smooth curve back into that one that's going to be good but uh, speaking of prep i think i'm happy to continue in uh, to prep up kind of this suburban road network here okay we can do some different designs over this space and uh, hopefully start to satisfy these demands as and when they come in. So we'll just speed this up as we begin to map out this area. Okay, there we go. So just... Simply carried on expanding out the suburban network, using road guideline snaps and curve tools to create something of a slightly more interesting gridded pattern, but again, still plenty of more zonable space for Sims to come and move in. Again, remembering what we did at last episode as well with kind of, you know, the more awkward shaped areas, turn these into organic green belt. We can see places where we can do this again, you know, little concentrations of part life props and bits of commercial whatever you want to do to make these things look a little more organic, of course you can. Let's drop a couple of park assets in and get things moving around a little bit. Let's go for maybe a plaza. Maybe a little plaza with trees perhaps up on the corner. And again, let's carry on just uh, zoning up uh, commercial patterns. Again, you can go specifically zoned here if you want. If you've been enjoying that from previous episodes, carry on doing it. Everyone's preference is going to be different here, right? As long as you're having a nice time in City Skylines, that's there. That's the important thing, right? Such a good game. <laughs> if you haven't, this is kind of the first time you're playing it. There we go. There's our next uh, milestone, which gives us tourism. Very nice. That's what we want to play with. And then we'll uh, get into nightlife today as well. We also lost some fancy new roads today, which is to do with After Dark DLC 2, which is great. Okay, so let's have a look at these. So we get some new treed roads. Um, we do have new functionality now. So previously, uh, these trees here, uh, they are just tree-lined roads. Very nice, very pretty looking trees. We can now come into our tree menus, grab any sort of tree that you want, and then you can now left-click the tree on the road. 
and it will upgrade the tree on the road into the one that you have in your palette. Very cool. This has been a long time coming. <laughs> this is one of the functionalities of the Network Skins mod, and now it's in the vanilla game. Very cool, very nice. Okay, so whichever tree you want, it can be anything, and it will kind of scale to fit the road. Really cool. Big fan of this one, okay? So, I like that. So, you can go for any treed road you want by using that method. Uh, we did also not some new roads as well. We got a bus and taxi road, uh, which is really cool. So, we can now maybe have, you know, this road down the main street here that has buses coming down it to have a dedicated bus lane. It's going to help the buses out, okay? We'll just see so many people walking through here too. Very exciting. <laughs> I love seeing a city become walkable. There are a few things as satisfying, right? And cyclable as well. I could sit here for hours <laughs> just watching these little junctions. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, but we did just unlock uh, tourism, however, which is where we can now come back into our district specializations. And I can say I want this to be a tourism specialized district you just click it it'll get the little icon and any commercial zoned within this district now will appear as tourism buildings which is very very fun indeed so i want a way down here now right currently this road is totally isolated and uh you know it's people need to get down here to enjoy at uh, the tourism waterfront i'm gonna bring this down i wonder if have we unlocked our nightlife parks yet yes we have we have very good okay so, we're going to come back into terraforming first of all, because we need to do something with the land. I'm going to come into my slope terrain. Again, the video for how to use all these tools is linked down below, but I'll briefly run over it here. Uh, with slope terrain, very much it has a right click and a left click function. Um, right will set the height that you want to slope to, and then the left click will slope up to that height as you move towards it. Okay. Slope terrain is probably the most awkward one to get used to, but it's not that bad. So you can just see how I want to slow pull this out. So the road has an easier time coming down onto this tier. Okay. So I'm just going to do that. And that's going to be fine for me. I'm going to come back onto my road guideline because again I want to be parallel with the road network here. And I'm thinking I'll probably go for this spacing seems about sensible. Let's get everyone parallel and tucked in for right now. Going to come off of this main street here by four tiles. Now I'm going to come right up my slope. So you see how that's just a much more sensible, realistic slope up the hill now. Grab the curve road tool. Come onto the road guideline. And curve back into this one here. And we now have this little tiered waterfront. Where we can start zoning up at some commercial. To see what comes in with the tourism assets. Okay. And not forgetting, we're also going to want road to link down to the second tier you can continue to slope this if you like okay let's get a little slope up here so that incline isn't quite as severe and then bring this down of course pick a new tree now with the content creator trees why don't i go for a generic date palm here okay and we can have this down here now all right very cool so hopefully now we're starting to see the benefit of working with multiple layers this doesn't have to be a commercial design like I'm doing. You can do this with residential, do it with industrial if you want. It doesn't have to be this thing. Just start playing with the, with the terrain and the landscapes and you know, seeing what you can put together in this kind of idea and fashion. Lots of fun to be had with uh, different layers. Okay. But again, seeing my industrial demand spike now, so quite happy to continue paying out some industrial squares in and around the space we planned. Okay, so let's talk about tourism assets, shall we? <laughs> so, some of them are very ugly and will really break kind of the look and the feel of your waterfront. It's just kind of a symptom of the DLC. So yeah, let's start playing with uh, different zonable spaces here for the tourism assets. So you can play with different ideas. Again, very much like specific zoning like we have been doing different shapes or bring in different types of assets. So we could just leave the riverbank here as mud, but if we come into water structures, you do have an option for a key. 
which makes waterfronts a lot nicer. There is also content creator keys. Um, these are the Bridges and Piers expansion pack. These are really nice and also allow people to walk on them. I would definitely suggest getting this content creator pack. It's really one of the best decoration quality of life improvements. I will leave it linked down to Instant Gaming below. And um, that does help support me directly and it's super cheap now. Definitely worth getting Bridges and Piers. But for our vanilla friends right now, all we have is the regular vanilla key, which will work exactly the same as any of the road network. It will snap into grids, road guidelines, etc. So I'm going to come onto my road guideline and you'll see as you draw it, if you try and draw it where there isn't land, it says shoreline required. That's fine. So it kind of has to be on the, the edge of the shoreline and land. And in this case, I'll bring this up. Okay, I can bring this one down here. I'm going to maybe shift the angle now come down this way and then what it'll do is it just adds a concrete key to get rid of the dirt riverbank so it looks a lot more landscaped if you'd like okay and here we go now right seeing the benefits of using different sized uh, tourism zonings here to get different sorts of assets in so yeah again we're seeing the benefit of uh, specific zoning everyone okay coming in different sizes why don't we go for a big Batch of it along here. Let's also start bringing some services down too. These guys are going to want uh, perhaps a med clinic. I think I'm pretty game to have a med clinic along the waterfront, right? In case there's any sort of accidents when we get the nightlife in. Alright, that's going to be nice. Let's get a med clinic there. I'm, I'm assuming they're going to want some fire protection too. Who wouldn't, right? Let's place the fire station uh, over here. Although I think I'm actually going to uh, drop this down here. So it faces the water. That's going to be nice as well. I'm happy with that. Another hotel is coming in now. Now, usually I would dismiss these taller hotels, but because they're taller, they're kind of matching the height elevation we have here on this top road. And it's actually helping them settle in a little bit more. So, you know, I'm even discovering ways to use perhaps some of the more unappealing tourism assets more appropriately here. Okay. Very nice, but things are coming in uh, slowly but surely. Everyone's having a nice time. Uh, let's carry on growing. You can see we have more poo issues. What's going on? Um, what is indeed going on? Is it a power issue? Yes, it is a power issue. Yes, they're not getting powered. So now we need more power. Again, um, so we do have a new uh, power plant unlocked now for the oil power plant. Um, again, it's just trading off the upkeep and production values against your own city's budget. The oil plant is significantly more expensive than the coal. So I'm just going to stick another coal plant in. This will fix the power issue, which will repower the drain pipes and everyone again is fixed. Okay, so let's place in the power plant. Has that fixed all our issues, which is great. I'm getting a little bit concerned about you guys starting to abandon. So let's give you just a very horrible temporary power connection okay but i'm happy with this for the most part anyway and let's also start bringing um some more elevated walking pathways down so again we can do this by uh, coming into our grid snap okay this seems like a nice sensible point here we can come up to this one so i'm going to click on the ground and then elevate up by single point and then come back down. Okay, and then we can just get these little kind of arched bridges now between the two tiers. Plenty of decoration opportunities. We can perhaps trim up some of the vanilla trees and grab uh, one of our kind of rock decals I'll to sit along the front here if you like. And we'll start getting in some rock detailing. We can bring some of those new trees around here. Some of the palms too. Okay, so this is quite a simple way of just detailing between those two areas, right? I think I'm happy for some larger assets to start growing down here now as well. And perhaps a, a second road connection as well. Let's come in with a slope tool again, just so that gradient isn't quite as severe. I'm going to use my road tool. I'm using my date palms to upgrade the look of the road, all right? So I'm going to upgrade here again. And you can see now, you know, rather than just running with the very kind of base vanilla terrain, just doing a little bit of terrain work, a little bit of layering, we can now start to develop 
much more interest in waterfronts, okay? We are getting a touch of asset repetition. I'm afraid it's just kind of a symptom uh, of the, the tourism stuff. It does just kind of happen. But uh, find it and plot the Growables mods can help refine that problem if you are wanted to play with some mods. But it's growing, isn't it? It's growing. Let's make sure that we keep all this zoned up here. Yeah, people coming in. What we get in here is not enough educated workers. Yeah, that's fine. So let's check our education. We are screaming for elementary, so we definitely want another elementary school in here. Again, we can check our coverage. Once we come into schools, those uneducated will turn red. So there's a clear demand for some education over in this suburb here. So why don't we nominate one of these squares to become like a little school park, okay? Let's come in with a little tree road here. Again, I'm going to upgrade the trees because we can now. Let's go for what about some of these grasses. Actually, no, that looks terrible. Some of the flowers instead. Yeah, that's better. Right, let's go for an elementary school. Okay, I'm going to place that there. And again, let's go for a little complimentary supporting park asset in the shape of a small playground, which will fit in there. Okay, that should now satisfy. Uh, no, looks like we want one more, one more elementary school. That's going to be fine. Let's go for right here on the corner. Cycling network is working really nicely right now. Everyone's happy with this. And what I actually might do is continue to bring the cycle network down this space. Now there is also cycling roads, and um, we would have unlocked the last milestone. A four lane bicycle road, so we can have people cycling. On the roads if we want they don't have to just be on the path and there's also a small version of these as well two lane with bicycle lanes here um, which i might bring down into the kind of tourism district as well. well we'll sort of see what happens okay let's double check what jobs these guys want yeah so they are after a couple of highly educated workers and um, which is educate which is university level demand uh, but we're not at the point yet where we want to place it there we go we're getting some of the clubs in now too Okay, some of this stuff as well, like the seafood bars. Yeah, like a little seafood grill. That's a really nice looking asset. Uh, you'll notice differences with the tourism assets. They don't have levels. They are just one level. Same with the nightlife and green city stuff too. At least the commercial, the residentials have levels, but not the commercial stuff. Okay, but now just get in a nice little mix of tourism happening down here as well. Going to carry on introducing some more of those tropical kind of waterfront vibes here if we like. Let's get some coconut trees along the waterfront. Again, really can't recommend uh, Bridges and Piers content greater back. Uh, because you just get so many nicer walkable seawall keys. So if you're a fan of detailing waterfront builds, um, probably a must buy DLC. Really, really good. So we got some of these in here. So it's coming into the world of After Dark Parks. So under our parks, we have an option for tourism and leisure. And there's a whole bunch of waterfront parks here at that work on a waterfront, as you would imagine. Okay. So you see when we place in uh, the fishing tour here, that is giving us no road access. The key does have to be close enough to your road to be connected, or you can draw a road out to it. So with that in mind, I'm just going to redraw my... Uh, seawall key touch closer to the road network so probably about there it's gonna be good for me that's gonna be fine okay and then let's try and place uh, some of these in again so we've got fishing tools let's have this down here so you see now he reads is connected uh, because the key is close enough to the wall or to the road rather Okay, let's do that. Let's go ahead and get a jet ski rental. Let's go ahead and pop this one out here. A marina as well. How about a restaurant on the pier? And we also have a beach volleyball court. I think this would work really nicely down here. Why don't we uh, place this over here, maybe next to the med clinic. And then there's also a skate park as well. So why don't we drop this uh, up near our little park here? 
So with that cycle network in mind, I definitely want to bring it through the neighborhood onto cycling roads. So I'm going to grab those cycling roads to lane and we're going to now upgrade the road back to the arterial with cycle network. So the expanded cycle infrastructure it can now carry on down into the waterfront, which is going to be great. Okay. So people will start to abandon as we're coming in. It's just the fact that we need higher educated workers, which we don't have at the minute because we don't have a university unlocked. Which we will do at the next milestone. So I'm happy for a little bit of abandonment to happen uh, just until we hit that point. Until things can stabilise, you know. Otherwise, everyone's going to be okay. Getting some more residential demands coming in, so... Bring these over here as well. So again, running out of the point where I want some more industrial expansion. So I'm going to keep my one-way flow system going, of course. And bring in some similar sort of ideas. Around here. So now really, we're just kind of hanging around until we hit... Uh, yet another milestone, which will be kind of the last one of today's episode, uh, which will be Big Town, which gives us the uh, leisure specialization. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff, of course, alongside the high density stuff, which we'll look at next episode too. So I think I'm definitely going to start a new bus line that serves kind of this new local suburb here. Okay, we'll also make sure that it converges at some points with the road, with the bus line over here. So again, people can switch back and forth between the lines. Uh, quite easily, I can see an opportunity for it here, so I'm going to bring a new stop up onto this point, so it meets with the cycle network. And then we'll do one over here again as well. So we'll start from kind of the waterfront here, okay? We'll bring this down. We're also going to come up into the suburb. We'll come against the highway, just so we can see the bus kind of flowing around there. I'm going to make sure that this road carries on and extends down for a little bit. Got a little bit of space here. Now we can do some bus turnaround magic here. I'll, I'll kind of have a talk about how we can decorate the bus roads just using the bus stands. So what I'm really looking for here is a measurement of 10 and no more than that. So keep that as 10 here and then bring it back up. And then when you draw in a bus line, it essentially cuts away at a little bit of the pavement. So if we bring this back over now, it can stop here as well. And it can stop here. Now you see when we cut it in, that it, it cuts away like that. If we do the same thing on the other side, it will kind of cut like a really unique space of road out. It's a very small detailing point, but makes a difference. Okay, and then we will continue down the main road. You'll stop here. And you'll come back into district very good indeed and i'll bring this one back through and then complete it there so hopefully now you'll see okay it just cuts out a little bit of design in the road and you can use it from a detailing point of view it's very very minor but makes a difference we also have this bus line coming through as well and um, so i'd love to have the two stops right near each other here because what this is now going to allow me to do it's to just come through with no road guideline and start detailing up the transition point between the two bus stops. And you'll see people, you know, switching back and forth between these various lines as they need to. With some perhaps taller grasses around the rock. Okay. Really happy to carry on using these new sort of detailing palettes today. You know, don't worry about other buses, because it's a new line, they will eventually uh, stagger out. We also have new buses as well, if you're playing with the uh, Vehicles Content Creator Pack, there's a whole bunch of new ones you can play with now too. Okay guys, so we're very, very quickly approaching 7500 population. Uh, I am just going to carry on uh, satisfying these demands until we hit that, about 150 people away now. Uh, so let's go ahead and get some more commercial along here against the highway. Very much a fan of this aesthetic, right? And I hope now, for those of you that are playing along, you're noticing the benefit of cycling already. There's so many people in the city taking it. There's policies to encourage uh, cycling as well, which I would advise that you do put on city-wide. Um, it's under city planning, isn't it? Yeah, so under your options here, you have policies, 
you come across the city of Pony, which isn't unlocked until 5,000 or 6,000 population. Um, hit encourage biking citywide. So when the policy is active, citizens will prefer bicycles over motor vehicles. It doesn't cost you anything to put on and it's going to reduce traffic. So just have it on citywide. There's no reason not to. We have hit the next milestone and here we have a new tile. Uh, campus areas from the campus DLC. We also get Metro. Uh, very exciting. Metro is very, very powerful and will keep people moving around everywhere. Leisure specialization, which is what we'll look at now. A bunch of policies. We also get the high density versions of our zonings, which is very important, uh, which we won't look at today. Uh, and a bunch of new buildings as well. So let's have a chat about nightlife, which is the next kind of major part of the After Dark DLC. So I'm going to trim up this district here, okay? I'm just going to get rid of this one just by right-clicking it to trim it off. And then I'm going to draw in a brand new district over here. So nightlife and tourism are two very different things. That should be okay. I'm going to do the same thing this time, but give it the nightlife or leisure specialization. There we go. You will see the little theater mask appear here. So now that we know this is applied, I think I'm going to slightly rejig my road network so it flows with the flow of the terrain. Same with the key as well. Let's bring that down. And again, it's a simple case of aligning if you like. You know, we can see we've left a tile of space between here. You can even draw in the distance if you like and see it's a kind of a distance of 40. Okay, but I think I can see again opportunities for perhaps a second layer or tier to appear. So I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to terraform this out with my large or medium brush size. And then just cut away at this new tier. So I'm hoping that through playing with the idea of layering up tiers and kind of different ideas with the terraforming tool that you'll hopefully see a much more distinct difference in your cities and playing with layers, you know, I haven't forgotten either. We will jump into Palavan and that will really kind of hammer home the point of what different layers of height can really do for you in the grand scheme of things once the city gets going. Because obviously Palavan's finished now. But uh, it highlights the, the difference that it makes, okay? So now we'll start to see uh, nightlife specialised buildings come in. They're very much the same. They're going to attract sims. They're going to attract tourists. We have power? Yes, we are. Already in need of another power plant. We go ahead and throw in a little temporary call number again. We're getting to the point now where we need kind of a bigger industrial episode. So perhaps... At the industry's DLC uh, will come will come soonish maybe. Also notice that this is cycling road. It should not be that. Regular road. There we go. And yes, still lots of people transferring between the bus lines. This is very nice to see. Looks like this line might want a few more buses. This line is actually at the point where it now wants to be supported um, by a metro network, um, which is quite important. So if you start to get this at your bus stops, like hundreds of people um, waiting and the buses aren't clearing them, this is a good indication of that another public transport needs to come in and support this now. Nine times out of ten in your cities, this should probably be metro trams if you're playing with snowfall, but metro ideally. So I think that's what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to introduce the very first and basic metro system and um, to start helping support this bus line. So coming into public transport, we have a underground metro station with the Sunset Harbour patch. We also got the introduction of overground metro. We won't use those today. We're just going to use the underground metro stations. I'm going to place one here. Okay, you'll notice it has two ends either side of it, which can be expanded. Uh, using our metro track, we can come underground. And then we can draw up metro tracks um, either side of this thing. Okay, so I want to now use this to support uh, my bus line. I want to make sure, again, the metro stations are loud assets. Be careful of where you're placing them. I want to have one right here. That's going to be fine. I'm going to keep the metro system flowing along the main arterial road here. Okay, I'm going to have another stop. So we're over here along the main road again. And then perhaps one down on the waterfront too. Okay. And now just a case of uh, linking all these tunnels together. And there we go. 
So exactly the same process with the buses now. We just draw in metro stops at each of their stations. Uh, we want two alternating lines as well. So once we've got one in here, we're going to run the other one back the opposite way. Metro systems will change and reconfigure depending on what stations you're using, how many lines are coming out of them, what other methods of public transport they converge with. That'll all change. So let's just take a little minute here now to observe the functionality of the bus stop now it's supported by Metro. We'll begin to see people take the Metro stop and the buses as a result will become less busy. God, <laughs> how unfortunate to get three of the worst commercial assets all growing next to each other. Right. So now to see public transport starting to work with each other, there's people starting to take the metro station. Okay, let's have a little look down here too, see what's happening. Again, people taking this wider metro ring, other places around the city, 77 at this station. And we can just... See here, 64. So just people starting to pick up those methods now. AI will start to read all this public transport infrastructure as faster ways around the city. And the results start to drive less, which is always, always a good thing. We should hopefully see some cyclists coming in and out of this area too now. Yes, we are. Very good indeed. Okay, so we've covered a ton today. <laughs> we've covered an absolute ton of stuff, uh, including Metro, which I wasn't expecting to cover in today, but Kind of a nice example there of how to show how metro and buses can start working nicely together to uh, support one another and bring people to different places around the city. All right. Cool. So before we move into a detailing time lapse, I will jump into Palavan so we can have a look at how the layers of height work in a complemented city that is now kind of full size and complete. So you see this process in action kind of in a finished product. So we'll dive into Palavan right now. Okay guys, so this is Palavan, our vanilla city skylines build, and we'll very briefly run over uh, some initial concepts of how terraforming can help affect a city. Uh, so okay, right here I have cut away three different tiers, one for a fishing marina, one for the highway, and then the next for the university campus. Now you just see how this sits, right? It's just an elevated mound, it allows for other larger road networks to now peel off of this layer and cross over others. So this is a nice example of kind of indentation against the landmass to create different tiers with the terraforming tools. Again, all of these sorts of videos are linked down below. Uh, a little bit of reclamation using level terrain to bring out a ferry pier. Uh, that sits out here as well, okay. So different ideas there. And then perhaps Palavan's largest piece of terraformed engineering, if you like, is its ring road which is this is just a level terrain layer all the way around the edge of the downtown and that keeps a ring road flowing all the way around it to manage all the high density assets likewise here again as well you can just see where it peels off on that second layer so i would really recommend just kind of checking out palavan in general if you haven't already because we cover a lot of these ideas and you know how working with different terrain heights and bridges and networks really helps lead to a much more interesting looking city. You know, this is all vanilla. This is all stuff you can do with the DLCs in the base game. It's just getting used to them. So, some very brief examples of terraforming. There's also one happening here as well uh, in Canalavan, where you can see we brought the metro across. All right, and then it switches back to on the ground as it moves off a different layer of height again all level terrain happening here and you know you can have ferries coming through and lots of different possibilities you can see where i brought more cycle network through here too you know still cycling here <laughs> cycling's really powerful so this a little kind of brief highlight and showcase of what terraforming can do for your city i hope i've kind of hammered home the point but let's go move into a detailing time lapse for the noobs guide and then we'll be right back
Okay guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, likes, comments and shares below really help bring more people to my channel. If you've fallen in love with the content and would like to help support me, there are links down to Instant Gaming, which I've talked about today, and Patreon below. Equally as much, if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Really happy with today's introductions and the first touchings of After Dark in here as well, playing with the tourism and nightlife waterfront. To be honest, I found some new ways of using um, the tourism stuff here today along the waterfront to actually make it look quite nice. I'm not usually a fan of it, but this build, especially with the new content creator trees and the new green belts that we brought in, uh, really nice, really enjoying it. Uh, much different to anything I've really, really done with tourism. And the layers of heights as well, hope um, playing with the terraforming tools today has helped to get used to them alongside checking out a couple of examples in Palavan uh, as to how terraforming can be used from an infrastructure and design point of view. But otherwise, do hang around for some cinematics and check out today's editions uh, in action. The public transport systems are getting really busy now, so lots of walking porn. Uh, very nice to see indeed. But otherwise, I will shut up and I will leave it there. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.